So data is everywhere around us, and it's changing almost every business, uh, every aspect of how businesses are run today, including the sales functions within the organization, as one example. A data-driven culture has been proven to lead to higher competitive advantage. But how do companies create such culture? How do they transform their traditional sales decision-making processes into data-driven ones? What are the challenges that they face during this transformation? So with the sponsorship of the Direct Selling Education Foundation, we are pleased to shed light or more light on this topic and focus on the sales function within the organization with our two speakers today, Bassam al Qasar and uh, Yami Michali. We spend a lot of time in analyzing data and trying to understand how the business run. My goal here is really I want to increase a headcount. Okay, increasing headcount, that's increasing people that are selling how they're selling your products. What does make improve, improve headcounts? If you look at KPIs like uh, recruiting, um, people who's walking away from the business, we call it the deactivating, trying to understand why they are walking away from the business, why people are staying, you know, people that are coming back into the business, you know. What makes him come back, you know? So one of the things right now we're looking from machine learning, we're looking for a predictive analysis. So we look at our business, uh, somebody comes in and join the business and uh, the first step for them to become inactive if they don't hold a show or a party or a sale for 12 weeks. We call them inactive 12 weeks. So we look at trying to look at the data is, can we recognize any patterns? What makes somebody becomes an inactive after 12 weeks? If we recognize those things, what can we take? What action we can take to keep those people and improve your bottom, your, your headcount? Because again, in a direct sale, it's not just about really selling the product. It's about the relationship between the seller and the buyer. And a lot of retailers today, they are recognizing that by going after the social media data and trying to understand the consumer's behavior. Direct selling has been doing that for many years. You know, building that trust between the seller and the buyer, that is the key for us and understanding the behavior. So ACN, for example, one of the largest, almost the largest, I'd say, from a multi-level marketing with the telecom services. So we observed so how the wireline products are doing. So um, we have a digital phone service and uh, high-speed internet that um, sort of, you know, that we track. And also, as I said earlier, with flash wireless, and other types of services, energy products, and things like that. So we observe how the products uh, perform across geographic areas, and also just uh, the type of tiers, and, and just to really see, you know, what can we infer from the information. So that type of analysis allows us to understand, you know, for example, how promotion, how effective promotions are, you know, and also just uh, what type of areas, just to begin to, begin to correlate how the geographic regions sort of receive the products. Like, you know, what, for example, which states do best with energy type products, right? You know, and so we do that type of analysis and collect all those reference points, again, for the purpose of understanding how best to recommend new offers and recommend new products and to use so, so that type of intelligence there. Now, we are also beginning to start to take a look at machine learning to start to correlate, you know, information, for example, with the wireless area, to begin to understand, you know, how can we build sort of information between devices and networks and understand sort of behavior. So as we have users that sign on to Flash, we can then sort of proactively know how well particular devices will behave, you know, in particular uh, networks. And also a little bit deeper sort of type of analysis, you know, regression analysis, to maybe predict churn, for example. You know, how likely are certain customers to churn? What are the factors that lead into churn? The other thing is big in direct sale that is um, really compliance with a code of ethics of direct sales. So many, many companies they get into, because you have a volunteer sales force, sometimes they get so excited about the product they sell, and could that could lead the company into trouble because they now they make a false claim about the product. So one of the things that we monitor constantly on the social media, we have tools to look at what people are saying about your product. You know, somebody can say, well, this cookware, if you use it, can cure cancer. You know, you know, that's not true. <laughs> you know, 
So those are the things that, and the industry is constantly, constantly looking at that. So one of the first challenge that we looked at, I'd say, okay, um, there's a lot of data that needs to be captured, is not being captured in these old system. Systems are built from 20, 30 years old. You know, they are different from the way they built today. Uh, in addition, the quality of the data that it's really collected wasn't there. So one of the first initiatives that really we went about is say, how can we collect more? How can we improve the quality? Next, how do we improve access to the data, to the user, to the our, you know, to our user people? So my organization, believe it or not, when we joined them, that the only way you can get access to data, you can laugh, is by requesting a report from a computer room. You know? uh, don't be surprised. There's a lot of big organizations still run that way. You know? We change that. We turn it upside down and say, okay, the data has got to be at your fingertips by providing tools, providing clean data. We will enable them, empower them to make those decisions. Always what we say, okay, two factors. We always look at any system we put in place. You, if you put in the system more than what you take out, that's not a good system. Okay? If you're investing a lot of money in the system to collect this data and you're not getting any return, that data, the way they can make decisions on it, is not a good system. If you're spending a lot of time collecting data versus analyzing the data, that's not a good way to do it. And that's exactly what was going on with our organization. 90% of the time was spent on collecting data, 10% on analyzing the data. And we kind of flipped that around in the past few years. One thing I want to add before we definitely will talk about that, the, uh, the consumer of the data in our business is not just the corporate office. We have to provide that information also to those business owners, small business owners that they sell our products. And they are maintaining their teams and they look at the team performance and they need to understand how their team, how this team are working. And you need to worry about data security. So changing the way you think, it's really, that is the best, most, the most challenging in an organization. Many organizations, they used to spend a lot of time, they still spend a lot of time analyzing what happened, but not about what is going to happen. You know, that's a completely different mindset. And then the next part of this is, if I'm gonna let an analytical tool tell me what is going to happen, versus I'm gonna trust my guts and make the decision that's gonna move, you know, the lever or make the sale better, you know, that's a big giant step for a lot of people. Am I gonna trust a machine to tell me what to do? And secondly is really data quality and data quality. If you don't have a good data, you don't have a good quality of data, sometimes the data really could mislead you down the line. Uh, third, of all, third is really know exactly what you want to accomplish. And I work on many initiatives that we found ourselves at the end of it, like, okay, wait a second, this is not where we started here.